power of death is seen. Now, what does it mean? The power of death is seen. So what gives life to death is sin. So when sin is in force, when sin is in the place, expect death. The gospel of wealth and riches can only appeal to a few. The gospel of going on vacation, owning cars, owning private jets, only getting riches can only appeal to a few. But this gospel of the resurrection appeals to every single individual, whether rich or poor, whether white or black. See the one you thought of me, give out your glory, you can't turn and rescue me. Yeah! The reality is, we die every day. What could be the way out of this disease became see for us that we through him might become the righteousness of God. If fear not, I am the resurrection and the life. Sickness that is torment you, I declare, because of your confidence in the resurrection and the life, may you be healed. See, we love to do this because this carries life, this carries power to transform. It carries power to change situation. You see, forget about what all these unbelievers, all these people are saying out there, all they're trying to do to make you, you know, have confidence in this. But let me tell you, it works. It works. You see, when somebody is sharing something with you out of his or her own encounters, his or, his or her own experiences, you can tell that the energy is different. This is an experience. This is an experience. This is a, it's an experience. You've seen it happen. You've, you've, you've felt it. Oh, take me out of the storm to make you for His glory. Yeah, yeah. Right after this, I'm gonna bring it's that message away. Taking me out of the story, making room for Your glory. You thought about me, gave up your glory. Yeah, Yeshua. Who am I? See the one you thought of me, gave up your glory. You came to and rescue me. Yeah. Take me out of the story so I can make room for your glory. Yes, sure. Yes, sure. Yeah, my little baby. So I can make room for your glory. Yeah, yes, yeah. I told you, this is going to change some lives. It's going to change some lives. You came down and rescued me. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I am a little bit of a man. I am a little bit of a man. 
hear the message death swallowed do you know that we were not made to die this is the victory that overcoming the world even our faith faith in this is going to transform change a lot of things around you the song this is the message this is the gospel summarized in about seven minutes the gospel of salvation the gospel of redemption oh yeah oh this is the message victory over death we were not made to die we were not made to die but here here's the case we die every day what is the way out the way out is jesus listen why was the human body naturally programmed to fight against infection? Why do we consciously, unconsciously make every necessary effort saving the life against that threat? Why self-defense raise our aim? The devil found offender usually no charge against the defendant. Why is it run forward taking up? Another person's life and crime universally. 
Why do we sorrow when the loved ones and relatives pass away? What explains the subconscious tendency of wanting to live forever? Why is suicide universally stigmatized and discouraged and even considered a crime in some parts of the world? Have you thought about this? Have you ever thought about this? Have you? Eh? Everything testified We were made to die We died because we made it Could there be a way Could there ever be a way There is an enemy to man, to man, death is an enemy. So I'm asking, what could be the way out of this the situation? Could there be a way out? Oh, have us resurrection and the light. Oh, that is who. Oh, resurrection and the light. Oh, that is who you are. Oh, come on. Resurrection and the light. Oh, that is who Jesus is. That's the whole gospel resurrection. The resurrection and the life that is the entire gospel gospel of salvation just stay tuned i'm gonna be bringing some something away oh yeah so we were not supposed to die the reality is we die every day what could be the way out of this distressing situation yeah could it be Jesus Christ? Could it be Jesus Christ? Could it be the one to take men out of this distressing situation? Yeah, I think I believe so. He's the one. Okay. Oh, I pray Jesus. With so much passion, cause I can identify with what he did for me. What did he do? He died on the third day, rose triumphantly from the grave. Death is defeated by Jesus Christ. Yeah. By Jesus Christ. Come on, this is the so good news. My faith in me, my confidence in me, I can overcome that. Oh, oh Jesus. Resurrection and the life is the hopeful. The hopeful mankind is the hopeful everyone. Hey, oh. Resurrection and life. So what happened to our departed loved ones? Oh, our departed dear loved ones. One day, one day, you're gonna be waking from the sleep. It's just a sleep. It's just a sleep. When a break of dawn comes. You will be out of it. You will surely be out of it. Oh, death is defeated in Jesus. Ha. Will never die. Will never, never, never die. Mary Christ will never die. Resurrection and the life. So stay tuned. 
Here comes the message. Here comes the message. Here comes the good news. Here comes the good news. Here comes the good news. So like the song is saying, we were not made to die. So scientifically proven, the body has been programmed naturally to be able to stand and fight off infections because the body was made to survive, to live. So if that was the original intention of apples for us, why would the same creator program our human body, our human system to be ready to fight off any form of attack in, in, uh, in, in terms of infection, virus, viral infection, bacteria infection, why, why would the, why would the, uh, the, the Almighty create, program the body to be able to fight, fight off infections on its own? Because infections are potential death threat. When the body gets attacked with, with an infection, the next thing possible or probable is death. But this is the case. When the body gets exposed to infection, naturally, it, it, it gets itself ready to fight it off because it doesn't want to die. Because it's in the original intention for the body, for us, was to live for good. Now, the other part says, why do we consciously, unconsciously make every necessary effort to safeguard our lives against death, death threat? Why? Why is this so? It's, it's, it's so natural that whenever our body, whenever our lives is under threat, we will do everything within our capacity to make sure that we save God our life. Now, when it comes to uh, to the legal point of reasoning, is it why is it why is self defense self defense that result in the death of the offender is usually not charged against the defender because the defender is in the natural process, the natural cause of trying to save his or her own life because the offender was trying to do something against nature, something unnatural. So the defendant in trying to protect his or her life against the offender's attack and he he that he or she is just trying to do something that is naturally reasonable so when the offender dies out of the out of the scaffold whatever the defendant is let go scot free you know and uh, the other argument the other argument why is the taking of another person's life universally labeled a crime so to take somebody else's life away from him or her, anywhere you find yourself in this world is a crime. In Africa, it's a crime. In America, it's a crime. In Europe, it's a crime. In Australia, it's a crime. In Asia, it's a crime. Whatever it happened, it's a crime. It is labeled murder. Universally, we all speak the same language. Whenever somebody snuff out the life out of another person, it's a murder because, and it's a crime because it is something against nature. That person has just done something criminal against nature. Now, that you, 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 you ask yourself, why? Why is it that? Why? Why do we? Uh, why? Why do we have the? Oh, what explains that subconscious tendency, the subconscious tendency of wanting to live forever? Everybody has that subconscious, that unexplainable desire of wanting to live forever and not die. Why? What can explain that? Yeah. The explanation to that is that naturally we're supposed to just leave and not die. So it is no surprise that subconsciously, unconsciously, 
we all have that desire we want to live forever now from from the emotional point of arguing here comes the question why do we sorrow why do we mourn when loved ones and relatives pass away tell me why do we cry why do we sorrow whenever loved ones and relatives pass away now you see on the other hand we celebrate we 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 celebrate the birth of a child into a home we celebrate the birth of a child unto a family we celebrate because life has been added we celebrate it because naturally life is supposed to be what we ought to have but on the act on the flip side when somebody passes when a loved one a relation passes away with sorrow we mourn memories of them reminds us you know bring some sorrow to our heart because they were supposed to leave and not die you know and then we can also still talk about uh, reason it from the from the moral from the moral point of reasoning why is suicide universally stigmatized and discouraged and it's even considered a crime in some parts of the world it's a crime it's a crime to take your own life so in some parts of the world when somebody fails at a suicide attempt he or she will get punished why is it so it's because by by the by by this by by this argument by this fact we can establish it that we were not supposed to die we were not supposed to that everything explain everything point everything from all these points from scientific point of reasoning from the moral point of reasoning from the emotional point of reasoning from the legal point of reasoning from the natural point of reasoning personal point of reasoning everything testifies that we were not supposed to die but here's the reality we die every day and that is the problem then why do we die when did death come into the picture of man i can tell you that the good book says the good book explains it it says the power of death is seen now what does it mean the power of death is seen. so what gives life to death is sin so when sin is in force when sin is in the place expect death whenever sin is in a place when sin as i am is in a place definitely death is lingering in that environment death is in that place so what brought death to us was sin and what is sin sin is disobedient sin is missing the mark sin a man choosing to do his, his own thing which di- dis- displeases the lord man trying to do do his own thing that 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 never pleased the lord so that's what happened when man disobeyed when man did not listen to to the word to the voice of the lord decided to do his own thing sin came into the picture immediately sin came into the picture and invited death as well so that's how death came into the situation and over the years over over the years man had tried his own way trying to fix it but it never worked but because it now the situation was was overwhelming was more than man could bear God, the merciful God, the merciful creator, he looking on man, see how wretched man was. He decided to fix the situation. So how did they do it? He had to come because it affected, because it's an issue that is, that confronted man. And for that issue to be fixed, God couldn't have been up there. He couldn't have been far away and decided to fix it. So he decided to come in a likeness of flesh and blood in the person of Jesus Christ. So when he came, no, he came for one 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 purpose to save man out of this distress, to, to save man 
out of this situation to take man out of this sin and death issue so what did they do again he took upon himself all the, the burden of man's sin but yet he was not sinful the reason why he came was that he bore he he, he, he he carried on himself our guilt our shame our sin so he carried it because wherever sin is in place death is the next thing he had to die so the reason jesus had to die was that he was carrying the sin so he said ah, we ought we ought to honor this man we ought to understand and open up our heart for this one he who knew no sin became sin for us that we through him might become the righteousness of God Jesus Christ he who knew no sin became sin that we through him might become the righteousness of God so let this mind therefore be in you which was also in Christ Jesus though he was God he taught in the robbery so we equal with God but he humbled himself came down and took upon himself the form of a man he took upon himself the form of a man of a servant and he went to the lowest a place that the man couldn't have imagined going and therefore that like scripture says because of this humility God also lifted him up he lifted him up above all names and he gave him a name that is above every name that are the mentioning of the name of Jesus every knee must bow knees in the heavens knees on earth knees underneath the air knees in the deep every knee must bow so at the mentioning of the name of Jesus sin must bow death must bow so Jesus went to all this for you and I he died in our place he was buried to pay the price of 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 of, of, of death he died on the third day he rose triumphantly from the grave so just as it was just as jonah was in the belly of the way for three days just as jonah was in the belly of hades just as jonah was caught up in hades for three days so did jesus he was caught up in the belly of hades in the belly of the grave for three days but he rose up triumphantly from the grave and never to die again he rose up to give man hope by being proud to his death proud to the death of jesus he demonstrated to us the the, the times the period he walked on the face of the earth jesus demonstrated practically that he had power over them see how jesus treated a lot of the people at the time with life see how he gave life to them i remember one time he had this friend called lazarus who was dead for four days On the fourth day jesus went to the town where this friend of his was buried the sisters approached him one of the sisters yelled out to him oh lord oh master for if you were here my brother would not have died i remember what jesus told her that day to her fear not i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in him in me will, will live he will never die he will never die and how did jesus demonstrate that to prove that he is the one that has life that has life is to, to demonstrate that he is the resurrection and the life he went to the tomb of the dead man the man who was dead for four days the year out lazarus come forth lazarus come forth at the voice of jesus lazarus he who was dead for four days came forth one at a time there was this this widow whose only son was dead and on the way to the cemetery for burial ah the met jesus the people carrying this dead body met jesus on the way and jesus being the resurrection and the life he touched he touched the young man the young man came back to life that's the demonstration that he is the life he is the resurrection i want to tell you something i want to tell you something we we'll talk about that but you are asking 
what is death? Death is separation. When the spirit in man, when the inner man gets separated from the physical man, death occurs. And within a, within some few days, ah, ah, the, the physical man begins to to to, smell, to get rotten. The physical man begins to decompose because life, the sustainer, the sustainer of the physical man is out. That is the physical death. We can also talk about the spiritual death. Being separated as death. So at a point when man was separated from God, man was dead. When man was separated from God because he decided to do his own thing, when man decided to go his own way, he separated himself from God. He was a dead man. And what it took Jesus to save, to save man. It took Jesus to resolve, to save the situation. So you might be here, you might be, you might be listening, watching me, and you are telling you are you, all you're saying is, I ain't dead, I'm still living. But I can tell you, you've been separated from the Lord already dead spiritually. It will only take a reconnection with God for you to experience the life divine. I want to declare to you, ah, death. No, every day we experience death in many forms. Death in many forms. Sickness is a sign of death. But I declare that as you make the move, as you open up for the Lord, any torment by sickness, any torment, any, any sickness that is torment you, I declare because of your confidence in the resurrection and the life, May you be healed. I declare that chain broken over you physically. Ah, uh, there is death all around physically. Sometimes ah, uh, it could be so the virtues within us that is lost. Virtues be virtue within us that get lost so get to a point life a man's life get get surrounded a man a man's life is clothed in shame because the enemy the enemy has killed the virtue virtue of honor it gets to a point where the enemy crash out kill the virtue of honor all that is left is uh, is shame all that is left is this honor but i declare that in the name of the lord jesus in the name of yeshua your glory your honor your virtue is being restored because you have faith because you want to believe because you want to reconnect with god i see your honor i see your virtue uh, being restored in the name of jesus it get to a point that uh, uh, yes yes a beautiful couple they just got married uh, and they have the plan that within a year or two we should bring forth we should have our, our, our own child we should have our own baby but they, they go through it it takes years years upon years and no fruit of the womb they might go see the best the best doctors in town but yet nothing comes out all because either the man the man is dead the virtue in the man is dead the virtue in the woman is dead but i declare i pray i declare over the couples i declare over the couples of the lord i declare over every godly couple in expectation in expectation of the fruit of the woman i speak life into every dead room come to life in the name of jesus come to life your dead room i speak life be resurrected be revived right now the spirit of the lord brood over you the spirit of the lord brood over the over the atmosphere in the womb life divine be imparted in the name of jesus same way i speak and i declare over the man in the dead virtue any sign any mark any virtue of impotence that has afflicted inflicted you i speak life divine i speak the resurrection the reviving power of the spirit of the lord i'll uh, be extended unto you be revived be revived right now in the name of jesus we can talk about that we can go on and on and on and on it gets to a point sometimes it could be financially people are 
dead financially. Guess what point? Ha, you can give the person as much as you can imagine. But within a couple of days, couple of weeks, couple of years, all that they have is lost. Why? Because financially they are dead. But I bring you good news. I bring you good news. The virtue, that virtue will be restored because of Jesus. The virtue will be restored because of Jesus. That, that situation will be fixed. That situation will be resolved because of Jesus. It gets to a point sometimes. Dead relationship. There are people who are dead. When it comes to relationship, they are dead. They are not able to maintain godly relationship. The relationship that destroyed them is what they put, they give their energy to. So I can I can say that when it comes to that which can 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 add and propel their destiny into the next level because that virtue of of maintaining godly relationship is dead they lose it but i declare over you because of jesus in the center of the affair i see that virtue i see you being restored in godly relationship we can go on and on and on but ultimately 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 it's life after death that matters life after death which is marked by the resurrection have you ever seen anybody resurrected jesus how can you also be resurrected how can you also overcome death it's through jesus so for because by strength shall no man prevail it's not by mind not by power but by the spirit of the lord saith the holy ghost for if the lord for if the spirit of the lord that raised christ from the dead was in you then he who raised christ from the dead he shall also quicken your mortal body i declare to you if the spirit of god that will dwell in you god god will god god will preserve you god will preserve your mortal body god will quicken your mortal body hey son son and daughters of god listening i want to i want to i want to throw you i want to throw this challenge in your face it takes it takes a relationship with jesus christ to see all of these unfolded it takes relationship with the lord to see all this manifest and be unfolded in your face the resurrection and the life that is who you are oh hey. that is who you are resurrection and the life that is who you are God bless you for making that bold move. Run to the Lord today. Run to Jesus. It is the, it's the only way. The way, the truth, and the life. It is the resurrection and the life. It's the one that can say, You see, this is the gospel. This is the gospel. Because everybody no matter your, your your status everybody can identify that there is something called death that lies ahead the gospel of wealth and riches can only appeal to a few the gospel of going on vacation owning cars only private jet only getting riches can only appear to a few but this gospel of the resurrection appeals to every single individual whether rich or poor whether white or black this gospel appeals to everybody wherever you are run to the lord today run to jesus let me declare this prayer with you lord jesus 
I come boldly before your throne of grace. I open up my heart, inviting you into my heart. That you will be the my Lord, you will be my master. That you will lead and I will follow. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Amen.